Unfortunately, tragedy has been part of my journey to the Goodwill Games. I am from Lininakan, the epicenter of the earthquake that hit Armenia in 1988. I was in Moscow at that time, being treated for a sports injury. As soon as I heard about the earthquake, I flew to Armenia. It was as if there had been a war, like a bomb went off and the whole city disappeared. There was just ruins. People were screaming and crying. My neighbor came over to me and told me, Robert, you are going to have to be a real man. Your father is missing. I looked for my father for 10 days before I found him. I didn't sleep one day. I don't know how I made it through that time. I loved my father very much. His death was very hard on me psychologically. My mother was very lucky that she walked out of the house just seconds before it collapsed. I am a religious person. I don't hide it. You should never lose faith no matter what happens. After the earthquake, I found strength within myself to return to sports. A lot of experts thought I could not make a comeback. The main thing is that a person should never give up. He should always keep looking forward because life is dynamic. Life is a good thing. When you overcome your problems, you really appreciate life more. Robert Amy in a great story. Great competitor. His family, by the way, is standing by and they are watching these events at the Goodwill Games in Seattle from the Erebuni Hotel at Lenin Square in Yerevan, Armenia. They live at that hotel. There is his uh, relatives. They lived there because, of course, their home was destroyed during the Armenian earthquake. We'll watch and we'll get their reaction, of course, after the events. In fact, let's check what's happening right now at Husky Stadium. Here is Bob Neal. Larry, the introductions are taking place as you look at Robert Emian for the long jump competition, our marquee track and field event tonight. It is going to be exciting. The challengers are going after one of the great records in all of sports, and it was set 22 years ago by the great Bob Beeman. The world record remains, remains out of everybody's reach. There are four, at least tonight, who thinks it may be in their reach. 29 feet, two and a half inches, set by Bob Beeman, the world and American record. Now, the four who could challenge tonight, let's take a look at the field for the long jump competition. Mike Powell, Carl Lewis. Jaime Jefferson, Robert Emian, and Dwight Stones will be covering it right down track side by the long jump pit. Let's talk a little bit about those competitors and how you think this event could go tonight. Well, Bob, I think there's no doubt about the fact that the competition is here, and I've said many times when you have a very competitive field, winning the event becomes the absolute compelling, most important thing. If they get a record, if they jump far, I think that's secondary. Carl Lewis has a 63 jump winning streak on the line. It goes back nine years, and I think any one of the athletes in this field would love nothing more than to, to beat him, no matter how far they have to jump to do so. But Carl Lewis is a great competitor, the only man to ever win the Olympic gold medal twice in the long jump, as same as the 100 meters. He did not get into this competition to lose it. We talked about Beeman's record of 29 feet plus. We have four of history's 28-footers here tonight. You see Bob Beeman in 68 did the 29, two and a half. Robert Emigan in 87 also cleared 29, one. Then Carl Lewis at 28, 10 and a quarter in 83. Larry Myricks at 28, eight and a quarter. Mike Powell in 1990. That happened in France, 28 feet, five inches. And Jaime Jefferson also in this meet cleared 28 feet also this year. Let's talk a little bit about Robert Emmy and Dwight Stones. How do you feel about his, his capabilities here tonight? Well, what a compelling story. First of all, he's driven by the memory of his father to jump well here. He's had a couple of very off years with injuries. In fact, he was in the hospital recovering from surgery at the time of the earthquake. He feels that he is amongst the best in the world in the long jump, and he, as well as Beeman, employed the hang style in the long jump, where they do not 
pitch kick their legs in the air. And maybe that is the real correct technique. The only two people to ever jump 29 feet, Emian is one of them. He has uh, also made that jump at altitude, as did Beeman, but this is a man who was second at the World Championships in 1987. Uh, if he's ready, he is amongst two or three people in this field who can give Carl Lewis a real challenge. Another one would be, of course, Mike Powell. Powell leads the 1990 world list at 28 feet 5 inches. Your feelings about Mike Powell's competition tonight? Well, Bob, I used to train at UC Irvine with him when he was there, and what a raw talent. This guy has speed, but not the kind of speed that Carl Lewis has, certainly, or of Larry Myricks, but he has phenomenal jumping ability. He has finally jumped over 28 feet. In fact, he leads the world this year with 28 feet 5 inches. His technique is by far not the best in the event. If he learns how to jump technically well, he may, he may be the one to break the world record because he is not doing so many things off the board correctly. He's a little bit bent, and we'll see that as, as we cover this event. You'll see the difference in styles of Mike Powell, Carl Lewis, Robert Emion, and I think that that will be important and is a key as to how this event will progress over the next few years. The only other 28-footer this year is Jaime Jefferson of Cuba. Jaime Jefferson has been competing very well, too. This is I said we've had strong fields. We've had balanced fields. They're both strong and balanced in this competition. How about Jaime Jefferson? Well, Jaime Jefferson is a very strong competitor. He's competed against all these guys over the last few years. He's been in the World Championships. He knows that he's amongst the best in the world. He was uh, leading the world for a, a number of weeks and months before Mike Powell. Dion Bentley here is a guy who broke Carl Lewis's high, uh, high school record just uh, a year and a half ago, and he's had some injury problems, but you have to look to him uh, for the future. Has not developed the speed, really. Has physical capabilities with a very long legs and tremendous jumping ability, leaping ability, but just hasn't ever put it together since he left high school. Jumped almost 27 feet in high school to beat Carl Lewis is 10-year-old high school record. There's Bentley, a, a look again at the first jump up the competition tonight. Well, you see, he doesn't look like a 100-meter sprinter on the runway, and that is what you need anymore is to have good 100-meter speed. Obviously, Carl Lewis has it. He's the world record holder in the 100 meters. Deion Bentley doesn't have anywhere close to that kind of speed. Bentley is in a good position, though, on the board. He's got two or so inches to spare, which shows that his step is on. He's the first competitor in this competition. This is by far and away the largest competition he has ever been in, so he will gain some much-needed experience jumping against these great veterans. And you see the distance of the first jump by Dion Bentley. And there's Michael Powell, silver medalist from the Olympic Games in Seoul, and he's the winner of that Slam Fest competition, that non-NBA slam dunk competition. He is a great leaper. He's an over seven foot high jumper. He can run the 100 well, the 200 well. He's been on relay teams. He really does have tremendous amount of physical talent. He already has a silver medal from the Olympic Games, so he has tasted a tremendous amount of success. He wants more. He's still young, and he has not jumped so much in his career that uh, he doesn't have a lot of good jumps left in him by evidence of the fact that he does lead the world this year with his 28 foot five inch performance just a few weeks ago in Lille, and like Willie Banks, he likes the crowd to be into it. He encourages the crowd to clap and get excited and get involved in the event. And I've got to tell you, this backstretch is absolutely jam-packed with people. I think they feel that something very special just might be in the offing tonight. By the way, Bentley jumped 25 feet, 5 inches and a quarter. Not an auspicious start for Deion Bentley, but let's see what the world leader in 1990 can get us here on his first jump. Mike Powell. Excited the crowd, Dwight. The crowd likes it. They can see that the jump was well out over Deion Bentley's mark. Mike Powell checking to see where his foot may have landed. You can see, again, not a beautiful sprinter on the runway, but tremendous leaping ability and the hang style, which Emian employs, Bob Beeman employed, right on the edge. It's a great shot with the, the POV. And they're looking it over. I didn't see a mark in the plasticine, but they do. The judges do have the, the right to look at that and call a sector foul. And one of the most famous sector fouls would be, or line foul, would be Carl Lewis in the 1982 Olympic Festival where he clearly jumped over nine meters, but he had a little quarter-inch foul that did not mark in the plasticine, but was called a foul and, of course, was negated. 27 four and a half for Powell, a very nice start. So Powell with 27 four and a half. Deion Bentley's first jump was 25 five and a quarter. 
And now you see Carl Lewis, who will be up next. Yeah, Carl said earlier, Dwight, that the, the weather, which has gotten definitely chilly here off Lake Washington at Husky Stadium with a little bit of tail, tailwind breeze, is not his favorite uh, kind of temperature because of his training in Houston. How do you feel it, it, that that's in his mind right now? Well, I have to tell you, it has gotten cooler since we did that interview with Carl about an hour and 20 minutes ago. The wind has picked up, but it's pretty steady at their back, which is what they want. If they have to have it, it's nice to have it at their backs, and it's not so strong that it's over the allowable. So if Carl was able to ride a, a one and a half meter, which would be around a three and a half mile an hour wind to a very good mark, I don't think that he would complain, uh, the cold notwithstanding. Well, the favorite in this event, despite all the other great competitors, two-time Olympic long jump gold medalist Carl Lewis. He has a 63 meet winning streak on the line. His first attempt tonight from Husky Stadium picture of concentration. Look at the difference in style on the runway. Look at that spinning form. Carl Lewis first attempt. It's a fair jump. The white flag went up. So now it's just a matter of seeing where he placed his foot. He really is a classic sprinter on the runway. Shortens that last stride, gets off a little bit to the right, uses the hitch kick style where he kicks his legs in the air. But look at that. That is perfect sprinting form. That's what a lot of athletes need to have more of to become better long jumpers. Carl dropped his arms a little bit just before the board. He may, needed to, may have needed to shorten up just slightly. Let's see where he is. Okay, he's got a little bit of room to spare, an inch and a half, two inches. That means his step is on the button. He tries to get as much of that out of that board as you can because, uh, let's face it, you measure from the end of the board. This is also long jumping to a degree for accuracy. You don't get any uh, extra for taking off one foot behind the board, so the athletes are always pushing as close to the end of that board as they possibly can to take as much advantage of the distance as possible. And an identical mark to Mike Powell. Both have jumped 27, four and a half on their first attempts, and that was slightly over the allowable. In the men's long jump competition continues. Dwight Stones bring us up to date on what's happening over there. Well, in the first round, this is the first attempt for Jaime Jefferson of Cuba. He has jumped 28 feet even this year until Mike Powell jumped 28.5 a few weeks ago in France. Jefferson led the world with his mark, seventh longest performer in world history. And he has been competing against the likes of Carl Lewis and Larry Myricks and Mike Powell for a number of years now. Here's the current standings. Carl Lewis and Mike Powell have the same mark for first place. Carl's mark is wind-aided as it is just slightly over 2 meters per second wind, 2.1 meters per second wind. But this is Jaime Jefferson, his very first jump in the long jump tonight. And the crowd didn't seem as excited about his jump as they were about Powell's or Lewis's, but it's a fair jump, the white flag having just gone up. Jefferson... Also a reasonably good sprinter, but not the likes of a Carl Lewis. He stepped out severely with his left foot just before he hit the board. In order to try and find where the board was, he was in good shape. But you step out like that and you confuse your center of gravity off the ground. He looks in good shape here, but he drops, which you're supposed to drop a little bit, but he stepped to the side. His entire body went to the right side of the pit. And that is technically not something that you want to do. I mean, Jefferson well under 26 feet, 25, four and a half, so not a great start for Jaime Jefferson here tonight. I mean, Jefferson, the only other man who's jumped 28 feet here in 1990 and one of the four competitors who will hope to take a shot at that long-standing Bob Beeman record. And of course, three of those four will try to unseat Carl Lewis as the reigning king of the long jump. The men's 10K continues. You see them passing slightly out of focus in the back of Jaime Jefferson here. The men's 10K race is now into the 18th lap, and Robert Emian is ready for his first jump. Robert Emian from Armenia in the Soviet Union. He's and not an you imposing... Excuse me, uh, Dwight, just to interrupt there. You, uh, we see on our picture uh, from Armenia the mother, Azatua, and the brother, Dekron, of Robert Ar uh, Emian watching from Armenia in the Soviet Union. Robert Emian not... Not, not an imposing physical figure, 
but he certainly has gotten the job done 29 feet one inch a number of years ago at altitude. In fact, that mark was questioned by Larry Myricks of the United States. He said, if he beats us at the World Championships, I'll give him his due, but I just don't believe that mark. And Emian went to the World Championships in Rome in 1987 and finished second to Carl Lewis to win the silver medal there, but he's a man on a mission, has not jumped well since that 1987 season, took one jump in the qualifying in Seoul, and here he is up for his first jump here at the Goodwill Games in Seattle, Robert Emion on the runway. And you can see him employing that hang style where he just jumps off the board, tucks his legs up underneath him, a la Bob Beeman, even though he's much shorter than Beeman was. Take away the, the way he just takes off and hangs. You can see why they call it the hang technique. It's a very effective technique as he has about three quarters of an inch or an inch to spare there at the board. All the athletes right on the board tonight, which is good for them early in the competition. Look at the height that he gets there. Fantastic height beam. And they say when he tucked his legs underneath him on the world record, he was over five and a half feet in the air. Emian's first attempt, 26 four and a quarter, a good start for him. So, but the long jump competition is going on. Dwight Stones, bring us up to date on that. Here are the current standings. And you can see that Carl Lewis and Mike Powell are tied for the lead, 27 feet, four and a half. Carl Lewis had the only wind-aided jump in the first round, just slightly over the allowable, so the wind is certainly helping them, and it may not negate any kind of a record at this point in time. Mike Powell now up for his second of his six jumps. A very good start for him, 27, four and a half. And this crowd is really getting into this 10,000, but they are just packed tightly along the backstretch to the almost full length of the long jump runway to watch this long jump competition. Robert Emion really is sort of in the driver's seat. He is last up in the competition, so whatever might happen through six rounds, he has the chance to slam the door on anyone that might have the lead beside him, but right now we're concentrated on Mike Powell. He's got the backstretch crowd all whipped up, clapping in unison. Powell, the silver medalist from Seoul, sprinting down the runway for his second attempt. Ooh, and that looks like a good one there. That may be an improvement over the first round. The white flag is up, so he is a fair jump. Let's see, let's see how he gets off the board here. He shortens right there, spreads a little bit to the side. What Powell does is he throws that upper body back off the board, and we've discussed that a number of times. He is really getting as close to the edge of the board as he really dares to, but watch the way his upper body goes back off the board. You don't want to do that. That's why Carl Lewis has been so consistent and jumped so far so often is he comes off the board and stays with his momentum forward. Second jump not as good as his first one, 26, five and a half. And this is a technical thing for Mike Powell. He's got to get in position. He knows he's on the board. Then he just has to execute the, ju the jump properly. Mike Powell with a 27, four and a half on his first jump. And so you can see that his second jump was shorter at 26 five and a half let's take a look at the head-to-head -head competition between mike powell and carl lewis and how it stacks up at the moment carl lewis will be coming up in just a moment for his second jump the first time carl lewis jumped 27 four and a half and the long jump comparisons there of powell and lewis you see that uh, lewis is uh, has dominated 10 to nothing head-to-head -head competition lewis of course was 28 10 and a quarter and the best career jump of Powell was set this year at 28.5. And Carl Lewis now for his second attempt coming up. Of course, Carl's winning streak over nine years long now. Mike Powell was uh, not even in college then. And Carl Lewis, even though he may not jump 28 feet all the time, he simply is unbeatable in this event up to this point. He, Larry Myers has had him down to the last jump, and Carl has come through every single time in the rain at the Olympic trials in Indianapolis in 1988. Lewis is just the consummate competitor when it's important and it's on the line and of course this winning streak has become important to him. He simply rises to the occasion no matter what the circumstances. He's deep in concentration. Crowd's getting into it on the back stretch. It's been since 1981 that Carl Lewis has been defeated in a meet 
in the long jump competition. A string of 63 consecutive victories in meets for Carl Lewis. Lewis's second attempt. <laughs> there may have been a foul on that White Stones. Is the foul flag up? They're looking very closely at the end of the board to see if there's a mark in the plasticine. We've seen no white flag. Now, Carl Lewis, you want to watch how he does not throw his upper body back off the board like Mike Powell. That's a real major difference. Let's see how close he came to the end. Now, see, it looks as though he's over the line. The red flag has now been thrown up, so that will not be a recorded mark. Remember, by the way, that the competitors get six jumps, six attempts at the long jump. Mike Powell, his best jump, 27 four and a half. Carl Lewis at 27 to four and a half, but Carl Lewis fouled on his second jump, and then Emian is now in third place, and Dwight, let's take a look at Emian's, Robert Emian's, second jump. As I was saying earlier, Emian, the last to jump in the order. This is his second of six jumps, and he had a reasonably good first effort, jumping 26 to four and a quarter, but on this, his second attempt as he sprints down the runway, Arms pumping, great height off the board. Sat down a little bit more than he would have wanted. Didn't get great extension into the pit. But on his second jump, he moves into third, 27 feet even. So he has improved on the last two, on each of his two jumps. Mike Powell had a good jump on his third jump, but no improvement. Now Carl Lewis, who has only had one fair jump and one foul. And he's adjusted his steps a little bit to this win. It is gusting a bit but not huge swings in the gust of wind it isn't way up above six or seven miles an hour so he's got a good read on where his step should be he tries so hard to get close to the edge of that board to get every centimeter possible out of the measurement and he really does concentrate very hard on the execution of his technique telling himself the key elements of the execution of the mechanics of the long jump. He has no trouble getting down the runway. We all know that. It's just a matter of technically executing and he gets to the board. This is Carl Lewis's third jump. And he felt good about it. Carl Lewis on his third jump. He is in second place behind Mike Powell. How did you feel about it, Dwight? Did that look like a, a, a really good jump for Carl? Well, I've seen him get off the board with a lot better height than that in the past. And he builds through the competition, often getting better as he goes. He stepped out a little bit with his left foot. You can see his body drifting to the right side of the pit. Let's see how he got less of the board than he had been giving. But he has moved into the lead. A four-centimeter improvement over Powell. 27 feet, 6 inches on that third attempt. And you can see he just sort of sat into the pit. He didn't extend into the pit. So I'd say he has easily another 6 inches to a foot if he works on that landing. So Carl Lewis has moved into the lead with that jump, 27 feet, 6 inches. Husky Stadium, it's a brisk wind night out here. The temperatures have fallen. It's the coldest night of the competition so far. The wind has had some effect on the competition. It slowed some of the runners down, and in fact, it was a wind-aided jump on the first attempt by Carl Lewis. But after his third attempt, Carl Lewis has gone into the lead. And Dwight... Stones is with us, the NCAA champion about to jump right now. Llewellyn Starks, the 89 NCAA champion, one of the younger up-and-coming long jumpers. We have such a great stable of, of athletes in this particular event. Dion Bentley, just a freshman down at the University of Florida. Llewellyn Starks. Also, watch his technique here. He steps out a little bit just before that left leg. We all seem to be doing that, except Carl Lewis. See how he gets on the board? Enough to spare there. A reasonably good sprinting form on the runway. Drops the arm only ever so slightly at the board. But see, he leans back with his upper body as well. That's a natural tendency to try to fight the natural rotation that your body feels when it goes forward. He is 26 feet, a quarter inch. He has a better one than that. That was his third jump. He has three more remaining. 
men's long jump competition. How about the feeling with the breeze down there, Dwight? Has any, any been any change in that? Well, I got to tell you, Bob, I am freezing down here. I've got a jacket and my raincoat on, but of course I'm not warmed up. I'm not in the heat of competition. My adrenaline is not flowing. I don't see the athletes uh, shivering, but between jumps, they have got all of their sweat clothes on and everything else, so they, uh, they are definitely affected by this, these conditions. Here are the standings right now. Carl Lewis jumped into the lead literally with a 27 feet 6 inch effort. Mike Powell of the U.S. is second, 27 four and a half. Robert Emian of the Soviet Union at 27 feet even. And Jaime Jefferson of Cuba is about to come up in just a moment. Let's have a look at Mike Powell's third jump. It was 27 two and three quarters. Mike Powell is his third attempt. He's concentrating very intensely here. He knows he had a good first one. That was a good jump to build from. Let's watch the way he backs off the board. A little bit more of a raw, natural athlete that has had a lot of work done to him to become a better sprinter and a good jumper. Look at the way he leans back off the board, unlike Carl, who goes with that rotation. It's almost feeling as though if you go with rotation, you're going to dive into the pit with your head, but it doesn't happen. Mike Powell hasn't quite gotten that technique down yet. When he does, he's going to really become consistently good. Jaime Jefferson of Cuba for his third jump. Swings the arms real long and then brings them in as he gets closer to the board. And we'll watch to see if he did as much stepping out right before the board as he has throughout the competition. It's a problem that he has always had. He drops his center of gravity before the board, which is correct, but watch and see if he steps out with his left. And yes, he did, much the way Llewellyn Starks did, and it really throws him to the right side of the pit. You have to step down. That center of gravity should drop slightly. That's how one jumps, whether they're jumping up in the air in the high jump or in the long jump. But his stepping to the side is not a good thing. He's a hitch kick jumper, and he had reasonably good extension on that one. 25 feet, 6 inches. He is not having a good meet by any stretch of the imagination. All of his jumps consistently in the 25 and a half foot range, 2 and a half feet off of his best jump this year, which was 28 feet. So something is wrong with Jaime Jefferson. Dwight, what's your feeling about as we look at Robert Emian is about to come up with his uh, what will be his third attempt. What's your feeling about Jaime Jefferson, the other Cuban athletes who have, of course, not appeared in many international competitions like this in a long time, and the effect that could have on Jaime Jefferson? Well, I think, let's face it, the Cuban athletes suffered uh, tremendously from boycotting the 1988 Olympic Games. Javier Sotomayor, the world record holder in the high jump, had a phenomenal 1989 as a direct result of it. As we check the standings here, Lewis still leading the competition, Powell in hot, hot pursuit, and Emion, really the people we expected to do very well. I think Jaime Jefferson is really the only surprise in this group in that he doesn't seem to be performing nearly as well as he did earlier in the year. But Emion is, we're wondering what's happening with him as well. Yes, Armenia 2000 on the back. And I have to tell you, from what we've seen of the devastation of that earthquake, it may be those 10 years until that area is anywhere close to back to normal. But he is very intensely uh, involved in this competition. This is his third jump of six. He has jumped 27 feet so far in the competition. And his mother and brother watching in Armenia as Robert Emian completes his third attempt. There is Azutua, the mother of Robert Emian and Dekron, his brother, watching live from Armenia in the Soviet Union, trying to rebuild after the terrible tragedies. And now a moment of joy. Maybe a foul on that third attempt. It was definitely a foul, Bob, on that third attempt. So Robert Emian on his second jump had 27 feet and a foul on his third attempt. We'll continue to follow this. All the competitors now have three jumps remaining. We'll continue to follow it very closely out here at Husky Stadium, Larry. The hotel is that they have no home. Their home was destroyed during the earthquake. Uh, we'll start with you, Digron. Are they rebuilding where your home fell? Yes. Our house, I would say that since the earthquake, they are building, but, but it's not ready. Uh, for the time being, we're waiting. Robert and I and my mother are staying at the hotel. And I'm staying with my own family. I see. Mrs. Emian, do you get... In the meantime... Oh. Uh, Mrs. Emian, do you get nervous before Robert competes?
a little bit. I'm happy and I am worrying for him and I am very impassioned about it. And I'm his mother, of course. What can I say? Yeah. I wish him good luck. Spoken like a true mother. Digran, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. When do you expect you? when do you expect Robert's home to, when, when do you expect Robert to have a home again? Very soon. He's given this promise that he'll be back real soon. When the building is not finished yet, but we're uh, waiting. They have given him a special location for the summer to practice so that he can live and do his practicing. All right, and Mrs. Emian, we wish you the best. We know it's very early in the morning there. Your heart is with your son. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, Mrs. Emian's husband died in that earthquake. Robert Evian is competing now at Husky Stadium, and that's right where we're going to Bob Neal. Bob? Robert Emian, uh, you're looking at right now, he committed a foul on his third attempt. He has three remaining, however. Carl Lewis continues to lead the long jump competition. His third attempt of 27 feet 6 inches gave Carl Lewis the lead. A jacket-clad crowd at Husky Stadium as the temperatures have dropped a bit here in Seattle. If you're watching someplace else in the United States, in Southern California, Southeastern United States, you'd probably like to have some of this cool air. Cool air, but no thank you. We will keep it here in Seattle. There you saw a look of the standings at the moment. And Mike Powell just concluded his fourth jump at 26 feet 11 and three quarters inches and Carl Lewis is getting ready Dwight Stones for his fourth attempt but first of all let's look at Mike Powell's attempt on the fourth jump on this particular jump you might notice Powell doesn't get very much height at all yet he still records a distance a little less than five inches better than his best of the day and I've seen this happen where he gets good height but not a lot of distance good distance but not a lot of height when he puts it together watch out Watch him lean back off the board, maybe not as bad, and he didn't extend into the pit with his legs. And he, it seems as though he's working out some technical problems. He's got two more jumps to do it. That was the fourth of the six that he's allotted. And Carl Lewis, who committed a foul on his second jump, his best, which put him in the lead, was 27 feet 6 inches. Carl Lewis defending his 63-meet winning streak that dates back to 1981. Carl Lewis, who on Monday night, Came in second in the 100-meter dash to Leroy Burrell of the Santa Monica Track Club. Now ready for his fourth attempt at the long jump. I have to think, Bob, that he would like to put one out there that would, have, would appear to be out of reach. It's cool down here. The wind is sometimes at their back, sometimes no wind at all. And he remains vulnerable with just a 27-foot, 6-inch result. This his fourth jump of the competition. Carl did not seem as pleased with that as he did his third jump of 27-6. He's not stretching into the pit. Let's watch what happens on the board. He's on the right side of the runway. He doesn't step out like Starks and like Jefferson and many others. Goes a little bit to the right side. You can see him sort of sitting into the pit. Plenty of room there on the board. Could make some adjustments there. Very nice sprinting technique as always. He didn't really prepare for the jump. He didn't settle down on that step before the plant and he definitely did not extend into the pit as well as he could. He's matched his second best jump, 27 feet, four and a half. He can improve from there, definitely. In Los Angeles at the Olympics, Carl Lewis didn't take all six jumps because of cool temperatures, but he may not have that luxury here with only a two-inch lead. We'll be back to continue our coverage of the long jump competition at Husky Stadium. Carl Lewis remains in the lead with a best jump so far of 27 feet, six inches.